Your brother passed away. How did he pass, if you don't mind me asking? He got shot six times in Stone Mountain. How'd you hear about it? Um, through a letter. I was locked up. Me and my brother, we actually got locked up together on the case. He got out before I did. In the midst of me, you know, fighting my case, trying to come home, I was in the hole. I was on lockdown on the seventh floor. Mail came, I got my letters. It was one female that I was talking to at that point in time. And I read the letter like, oh, you know, you know Mike died, you know, um, yeah, Braze it gone. And I'm like, I ain't gonna lie, I was mad, I crumbled up the letter, even I threw it, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, she tripping, she tripping, like she talking crazy, like. I want the custom, the mail laid out, man. I don't ever slide down through my door like this again, you know what I'm saying? But it was another letter that came that said it was two letters. One from her and one from my, one of my friends on the street, one of the close partners. His letter said the same thing. I was just like, man, this can't be. A week later, that's when my discovery packet for my case came. You know what I'm saying? And like, it hit me because you know my discovery packet. Braze, my brother's my codependent, so he had this picture. Yeah, the picture of my skirt pack, and it just, it just, mm -hmm. it just took toll him. I just went, I just started going crazy myself. Like, I was already in solitary confinement. If I'm already locked down, you feel what I'm saying, 23 hours a day, if I only get one hour out to take a shower and walk around the door, like, I was going through it. I went crazy myself, like, the first couple of days, like, me hearing that story, like, I couldn't control myself. But I could because, just because I was locked down, I couldn't do too much. If you were in general population when you heard that, it probably would have been pretty Oh yeah, shit would have went bad. down. Yeah, I, I, like, me, like, when you tip me off, is when I'm, when I'm on it, I'm on it. Like, I'm, I ain't coming off until I'm ready, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I was in general population, shit would have got crazy just by, you know, just by me going through my head, like, it could be a situation like, me coming out the room, just me thinking about it. Somebody might not did none of me, he just might be on the phone, just take it too long, and it may just blow, like, man, fuck, nigga, on the phone, I got, you know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> it's crazy. Something ugly would have happened, for sure. For sure. So, when he actually did pass, to the moment where you actually heard the news, how long of, of a time span was it? It wasn't immediate. He didn't pass that day, and you heard it that night. It was within, it was within a couple, it was within a couple of days. He died January 23rd, 2016. So around the time I got the letter, I was in the hole. It was probably like beginning of February. Like beginning of February. Nobody could call you about it or? Mm, I was on, on lockdown. I was in the hole, you feel what I'm saying? No phones. Oh, no phones. No nothing. No visitation, no nothing. Now, since you're already locked up, when they have a funeral for your brother, there's no way for you to attend. I don't know, honestly. I mean, some people, like, you can't attend funerals and stuff from the outside, but it really just depends on, like, I don't know. It really depends probably on how the case looking, or if you trustworthy enough of an inmate for them to let you out, and you feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't really know. But I ain't make it, though. I ain't make it to the funeral. It's kind of like, How much longer did you have to spend time behind bars from the moment you found out about his passing? By him passing, like I told you, we was on the case together. So by him passing, it actually like, brought a little light towards my side of the case, you feel what I'm saying? It was like, okay, you caught this case with such and such. Like, basically, like, it kind of felt sorry, like, oh, this your brother, you he just got killed, he died, ooh, ooh, so we're going to give you probation, we're going to drop the case, give you probation, we'll, we'll let you out. Let me give you another chance, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it was a couple months, a couple months, a couple more months. What were you facing? Like, let's say, you know, uh, they didn't drop it, there was no probation. Let's say it was something you took to trial, maybe even lost. What were you facing? Man, it was a burglary charge. And I was there, I've been on probation prior to that charge, so. When they first plea, they came to me, but they came in with a five through two. Five years, sir, two, you feel what I'm saying? Try to parole out, you feel me, if it's available, but I want to hear that, though, man. I want to hear that. 
rather have your brother, I'm sure. For sure. How'd you cope? Um, obviously, you're in your cell, solitary confinement, so for those, those few days, you were going through the motions, but you're still locked up before they actually say, okay, let's drop it, let's do the probation. Um, what was going through your head still through that amount of time? You couldn't attend the funeral. Um, how did you cope with this? I was lost, bro. Honestly, I was lost. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was just like, I'm already locked away from my family, my friends, everyone. Not able to get in contact with no one. And then, like, closest person to me just dropped like that. I ain't gonna feel like I ain't. I was going crazy. Like, my, this side of my brain fine with this side of my brain. And they both going against my heart, you know what I'm saying? They both fighting against my heart. Like, it was crazy. It was crazy. But, like, when I first heard the news, though, I was still in the hole, so either that day or the next day, whenever it was my time, after I got the news, whenever it was my time to come out from my hour to take my shower, like, I was in the shower, I was singing, you know what I'm saying, for my brother, like, hoping he hear me, you know what I'm saying? Like, why they take you for me? That's all I kept saying, like, why they take you for me? That's all I kept saying. I ended up making it to a song, like, I was in the shower, like, I cried in the shower. My first time crying, you know what I'm saying? Like, on for real, like, on a for real note. I cried in the shower, I sang the song with my brother, you know what I'm saying? I got out the shower, wrote this song now, like, man, this is gonna be the first song, one of the first songs I record when I get home. And you laid it down? Yeah. What's that song called? Brazy Love. Brazy Love. When you're going through the death of someone and you're incarcerated, does the jail system offer a counselor, a therapy, anything to get somebody through that? Or is that not even, you didn't even explore it, it wasn't I mean, awesome. they do if you bring it to their attention. See, me, I didn't just like really bring it to their attention because it's like, these people don't give a fuck about me. What the hell I'm gonna tell these? I'm already locked up. They, they already playing my life. What the hell I'm gonna tell them about some more shit that's going on on the outside of my jail? Like, they don't have nothing to do with them. Like, they not finna show me no sympathy. They not finna, oh, okay, let's give him an extra trade today. He's just lost his brother. Or oh, let's go, uh, you'll just take him out the hole since he lost his brother. Like, nah, like, they won't show me no remorse, so I want, I didn't really too much bring it to their attention. But like, so far, like the bro that was in the cell and stuff with me, like, I was telling them, like, they, you know, everybody wanted to know what going on, like, damn, he, you know, my bump mate, and I knew that I was in the hole, my bump mate was D Rose at the time, E Man, you know, he at the bottom bump, like, damn, little bro. Like, he really don't even know what to say, you feel what I'm saying? Cause like, there's really nothing he could say at the time, cause you know, I'm trying to, I can't yeah. imagine. I can't imagine uh, losing a brother or sister, but being incarcerated on top of that, the description you painted, it's unimaginable. When it comes to your brother, what do you miss the most about him? Could be a variety of things, but what's one thing you miss the most? I miss his words. I just miss the way he kick it, like, and then like. With my brother Brady's like, we want just the closest of friends, you know what I'm saying? We want just the closest friend. But every time we came on the show, like, it was just, I love how he kick it, you know what I'm saying? The way he, oh, boy, get something for your shit. Or he on some funny shit, or he, oh, boy, you got me fucked up, I ain't got now. <laughs> it was just everything about him, bro. Just everything about him, bro. The way he get mad at a nigga, the way he want to walk off and, oh, I'm going to smoke my own by myself. You feel like just, it was just everything about him, you know what I'm saying? His smile, you know what I'm saying? Like, no homo or nothing. He had dimples, you feel what I'm saying? Like, me now, every time I think he smiles, he just bring me up. Like, man, I see, I see him smile at me right now. Like, oh, man, he doing something productive with it. Like, everything about him. Favorite memory of your brother? Those are things you miss, but is there a favorite memory that sticks out that you could share with us? I say my favorite memory. My favorite memory was okay. back then we had, I was in, you know, we was doing like the little, like the little, the young, the young, the young set and the cast set, like kind of groups, like slash crews or whatever you want to call it, in my neighborhood. So at that point in time, I was like the leader of the young niggas. You know, he was part of the young niggas. So in order for you to get in, you had to fight. I was making them fight for them a little money flag. We was running the little money flags, little money bandanas. 
But my favorite memory, he got to find one of my other brothers. They had to fight to get enough. Like, it wasn't just like, no, oh, he won or he, or he lost, but, you know, it was only one money. At that time, it was only one bandana left. So it was like, okay, y'all got to fight for this bandana. But then one of y'all lose or win, so it was really like, whoever, which one of y'all going to come get the bandana? <laughs> no, he was just like, oh, boy, he got me fucked. Like, he snapped the bandana, like, boy, he's mine. Like, he got me fucked up. Like, nigga, I just hit. I just fought. Nigga, I'm Kevin said. Nigga, I'm Young said. Nigga, get my bandana. Like, I remember them day, like, he, he going to buff everything he want. Like, who, who, oh, boy, you better get some for your shit. <laughs> Now, somebody going through the death of a sibling and coping with that, do you have any, circumstances could be different for everybody, but do you have any general advice for somebody watching this interview and going through something similar? I would say, man, just, you know, look at it like this. Just look at the things you're going through right now. And think about it like, oh, dang, they could be going through the same thing. Like, I'm glad they ain't got to be here to go through this bullshit I'm going through. Or I'm glad he ain't got to be there, to, you feel what I'm saying? Or this just happened. I'm, I'm glad he out the way. I'm glad he in a better place, you know what I'm saying? So he ain't even got to go through the shit we going through now. Like, he could look over and look down on me, help me, you feel what I'm saying? Sometimes when people go through the death of a loved one, especially uh, the way your brother passed, Somebody can look at the death and it can turn them cold. It can turn them negative. It can turn them into a savage. Other people, when they go through a tragic death, as you described previously, it can make them strong. They can turn it into some sort of positive. It becomes motivation. Wow. How did you take on the death of your brother? It motivated me. It was motivation all the way. And like inspiration, like in. It motivated me, like, okay, now nah, I gotta go hard. Uh, now nah, I gotta go twice as hard. I did lost my brother, and like, when we got locked up on that case, before we separated, like, you know, we had to separate, and you know, they put us different, like, dorms or whatever. Before we separated, first thing he told me, last thing he told me, like, bro, you gonna make with the music shit. Like, I can see you making it. I can see you shooting past a lot of these folks. You just gotta stay down with it. You, know you gotta keep doing it. Don't stop. The day you stop, like, when you stop, that's when folks gonna forget about it, when you ain't gonna, cause, like, you gave up on yourself. So like, man, it really motivated me just to go twice as hard on everything I do, for my rapping and singing. Like, and I wasn't even just really too much into rapping back then, you know what I'm saying? But like, when Brazer died, like, I knew when he was alive, he ain't like, they know I could sing, he fought with me singing shit, but you know, we screen niggas, so nigga wanna hear all this self ass singing shit all the time, all that R&B shit, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's coming from me, his brother, someone he loved, but nigga wanna hear the rap shit, nigga wanna hear you talk about the struggle, you talk about what you done did, or, uh, uh, what you gonna do if this might happen? You gonna speak things in the uh, to existence? You know what I'm saying? So I started going harder in my rapping for Brazy. Like rapping when ain't just nothing I wanna do. I just do it for fun. Singing my passion. I just start rapping harder and harder for Brazy. For real. You did end up getting a facial tattoo of your brother's name. All right. Uh, how soon after his passing did you get that tattoo? Um. I got the tattoo as soon as I got out. Like, I don't know the exact time period, like exact couple, it was a couple months though. But as soon as I got out, like it was my first tattoo. He never did music, did he? No. What would he think of, you had just signed a deal recently with 300 ENT. What would he think of where you're at right now, musically? Man, he'd be proud of it then, cause Cause I don't know if he may or may not, but I don't think he know nobody else who just is close to him as like a brothership who's who actually made it this far like in the industry, you know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? I mean, ain't, ain't nobody else who just like he just really fuck with just really close to him like somebody he knows for real, for real, like that's in the industry. You know, who made it this far and gonna still keep it real, like. He been real proud of him. He been real proud of him. Now, this was a, a biological brother? No. Oh. It just, you just used the phrase brother. And like, it's like, it's like it was not not biological. You know what I'm saying? It's like you couldn't tell me he didn't want my biological brother. That way. Some people use a phrase called best friend. You say brother, but there's a phrase where people say, you're my best friend. When you say this is your brother, is it deeper than a best friend relationship level? 
Or is that one and the same thing? Like maybe people say best friend, it's you say brother. It's deeper because I use the form brother because, you know, brother is like family. And like, what do we all know? Family is way stronger than friends. For me, it's deeper than family. It's, it's connected, like, through your blood and through your, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I look, I call, I call the ones I really fuck with, like my partners I really strongly love, or my friends that I really strongly, you know what I'm saying, love and care for, I call them my brothers. Cause it's like they family, it's like you can't tell my family like, I ain't just really got no family like that. Even like just as far as like immediate family like, brother, sister, mom, I just reach out to. So like, everyone who got close to me and I, I put trust you, I get start caring for you. Even like, oh yeah, you family now. You know what I'm saying? And when you fuck up, just like the rest of the family that I don't talk to no more.